Get into Gate. This is episode 148. We're talking Stargate SG1. The full Get Into Gate team is here. My name is Mitch. Joining me as always, Matty Gibson. Yo. Brendan Gibson. Hi there. And Reese Gibson. Hey, guys. We're a couple of Stargate uh, long term fans. Reese is a, he's a fan, but he's a first time viewer of every single episode. We're watching one a week, talking about it from uh, an old fan's point of view with some uh, fresh take on it as well from Reese. And uh, seeing how the, the, the show shows shapes up in 2019 of course this is our last episode of 2019 so soon we'll be talking about stargate in 2020 and hopefully some new freaking stargate beyond. guys stargate beyond oh my god Ooh. oh my god oh shit register that domain so when they yeah. buy it back we can make some money yeah. then the show will actually be sponsored by the show <laughs> stargate queen great Holy people just- <laughs> stargate, queen. stargate janice bring back janice hashtag stargate jq1 <laughs> Stargate Origins. He's, he's going to be busy over on the Orville. He's, he's I, imagine his planet started an SG program called J- JQ. <laughs> JQ1, JQ2. If the JQ. JQC, and then like. Yeah. <laughs> you can call me General Quinn. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> this week, Death Nell, episode 16 of season 7. We'll crack into uh, the old synopsis on uh, the DVD format that I'm holding in my hand. Throw it to Reese and see what he thought. After the Alpha side is compromised, Carter flees from a super warrior with a piece of technology that may be the key to defeating Anubis's new army. Injured and unarmed with an invincible enemy on her trail, Carter must use all her training to stay alive while O'Neill and Tilk race to find her before it's too late. Written and directed by Peter Delawee. Yeah, he did. Nice. Sick. Pretty cool episode, guys. Yeah. Uh, I did like it. it. It it does have a bit of a bad tinge for me, but um, it was solely because I didn't really buy into how they found the Alpha site to attack it. I know the whole storyline of, oh, the Jafar went over there, they read their minds and all that shit. Um, and the Tokra. And yeah. all the toe crap. Yeah. It's sort of, yeah, I didn't like that sort of thing. But, yeah, the whole, obviously, bit of action. Uh, the new guns, the new, yeah, the super soldier, bloody Master Chief is what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. They're back. Master Chief's back. Master Chief's back. But, uh, yeah, I I liked it except for that little bad tinge. Yeah, I guess it was just a way to, to get us to there, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it like it. Little, it probably, yeah, it probably was the weakest part. Just getting us to the Alpha and side. We never yeah. find and you out. know what it you know what it was, I think, was cause the alliance for me was like, okay, this is it. Like this is us creating this massive fing army to take on the Guauld. Yeah. And this is gonna end up to a le- an epic battle. And then it was sort of the alliance's fault or the alliance's crumbling or arguing and then they send each you know, and that was the reason why they found it and broke it up. I thought it was just a little Mm. There's a pissy way to to destroy such a great thing like the Tolan, and they built them up to be so good, and then they were just destroyed by one mothership. Yeah, that's true. It does it does suck, and it does take it away from that great speech by Braytac at the end of the um, yeah. the assassin one on the Alpha Sart. I can't remember the yeah. name of it. Allegiance, Allegiance, yeah, Allegiance. And then he throws the dagger into the dirt, and you're like, all right, that's it, solidified. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and just the very the next time super, we see it, the super soldier, one super soldier ruins that. Yeah, I think yeah. I think this is one of those ones where they've started with the end point they want to get to and written backwards from there because yeah. basically what they wanted to do is for the season finale, they wanted us, like when shit hits the fan, they wanted us to be on our own. They wanted to strip back all our allies so we, we didn't have anyone to turn to but, our, but ourselves. I mean, they don't really address our alliance with the Asgard at all. Um, yeah. But yeah, they basically just wanted to strip everything back. So they've kind of started, they go like, okay, at the end of the episode... We want the alliance to be over and we're on our own. And Jacob's going to go away as well. And they've kind of so written backwards shit. from that. I mean, get rid of the Tok'ra, sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Tilk has worked hard on that Rebel Alliance, Jafar Alliance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, yeah, you're definitely right. That was the that was the letdown. Is, is and where, sort of where was Tilk in that there. room, by the way, when they're like, oh, the alliance is over. The, that, that one dude decides that yeah. Jafar are no longer with... Yeah, why is he in charge? Like, who made you... F- 
and oh, mate, yeah, if, like, they, if they put him and Tilk in the same room, there'd be no one left. To, there'd be no room left at the table to sit. Like just well, there, Tilk would right. swallow Tilk. him whole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tilk could just kill him and then have, the, have his say. You're right though, because at least with Jacob, and it was a, a big part of his story in this episode. At least he is a good mediator because he is both human and Tokra. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And Tilk could have been that for the Jafar side. He is yeah. Jafar, but he works with the Tari. I hadn't actually thought about the fact that it, it's the next time we've seen them since that defining like yeah you know knife in the ground moment yeah. to say this treaty's on because I, I actually didn't mind because I was comparing it to two weeks ago with Fallout where it's like oh here's the three uh, peoples of the planet Langara is that their planet not Kelowna but yeah. Langara yeah. Yeah. you know the three peoples it of Langara it <laughs> doesn't <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, never God. see them again <laughs> it's another episode where oh what's their history they fight what's this episode about them fighting what's going to be their future post this episode them fighting and yeah. it means nothing Politics. whereas at least with this it's like hey we're bringing up the the tension even though there is a treaty there's still a tension between the Jafar mm. and the Tokra and it actually progresses in a bad way but it does move along like at the end I do like that Jacob said it's not over but it's it's crumbling it's not like it was a definitive this is it yeah it was like mm. look shit we might not be able to recover from this and even the Jafar guy he was not definitive either it was just like look we need to do our own thing so it was sort of like an amicable split but it did progress their their story, so I didn't mind it so much. But now that you say that it is the last, the next time since we've um since yeah. that, I feel like Hammond took too much of a hard line, especially when the Toker are like like you, we you want us to tell you everything, and he's like that's non-negotiable. Mm. It's like it can be negotiable, mate. Yeah. You're gonna ruin yeah. the greatest ever alliance ever created by humans. Uh, the Toker are all dying anyway, so <laughs> yeah, but like that's, point. that's pretty big. It's pretty big shit. Mm. Yeah, it like, is. I did ha- hate that line though by that uh, Toker, you know, key, their key representative, Delic. and he, yeah, he's like, "You guys have a real knack for antagonizing the Gould." And I'm like, "Yeah, man, you're at war. Like, yeah. we're out there sort of just poking <laughs> the bear. Like, yeah. you want to fight us now? Yeah. You want to fight us now? Whereas the Toker are like." If we have to be in secret for the next two centuries, we will do so. Yeah, yeah I was like, I was like, mate, if you're going to start making general generalizations between you and Martouf, I'd be like, well, you Tokra have some serious teeth issues <laughs> where you are overbrushing and overbleaching. So just relax that. You've obviously got too much time. You're not doing yeah. enough work. You know, too yeah. much like, ultraviolet they're, work. They're basically a spy agency that don't do anything. Mm. Yeah. We've got like, some insurgents like in the there. The CIA. What are they doing? I don't know why I said that. <laughs> the great people. They want to <laughs> if you're listening, yeah, please don't kill yeah. us. And if you really like Great. us, send some I'm of that I mean, CIA I'm a huge Madden Secretary fan, so, yeah. you know. I, I just should, I, I reckon Hammond should have just gone, well, yeah, you guys do what you do best. You do you, Boos. Yeah, and then if we need help or if we need information, we can ask you and then, you know. Vice versa, yeah. yeah. You're not under our control by any yeah, means. Yeah, it's strange. It was Whereas, strange. Well, yeah, you, you're right about America. Hammond too, cause it's, and they even called him out on it, where Hammond's just like, oh, no, there's no two ways about it you have to tell us everything and they're like well yeah. do you tell us everything you're doing yeah he's like, oh that's different that's different yeah and it's like nah, not really yeah yeah just be friends and you it don't was have fair, to break up it was fair enough what the Jafar was saying like we we left you know our gods because we were being told what to do and then you're doing the same thing like mm. you know yeah. you we know that you're not a god, obviously, but it doesn't make it any better. Like, we, we're going to do our own yeah. thing. That was a brutal line that he dropped. He's like, some of us, and he wasn't saying me. He's like, some of us out there, yeah, we've traded one master for another. And I'm like, oh, that's got to hurt. Yeah. It's got to hurt for them to feel, but for Hammond to go, we're not trying to tell you what to do. I yeah. mean, you have to obviously do what we say. We're, we're guiding you. We're giving you guidelines yeah. that you have well, it's to like, follow. We're also we're keeping giving you fed. <laughs> yeah, we're feeding you, giving you free accommodation. You can and go weapons. wherever the hell you want. Yeah, and we're not threatening you with death. Yeah. Like, this is a better <laughs> deal. You like, know? Yes. every one of you have come to us wearing yeah. undies and that's yeah. it. <laughs> and <laughs> Clothes you, remember fed how you, you're all, you weapons. Remember how you're all hanging out with that, that guy you thought was like a Jafar and he was actually Imhotep? Yeah. Yeah, and he was just basically going to use you all. Remember that? Remember when we helped? Yeah, with we that? saved your ass. Yeah, yeah, that that was annoying. I'm wondering if though, but apart the... from that awesome episode, yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if um the reason we got we're going to get to Mazel, I wonder if um Tony Amendola Braytac was unavailable, and I'm wondering if that's why that like to yeah. me that would have been a much better scene. Like if 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 Teal'c was you know you know helping Jack sort of you know find Carter and all that kind of stuff. Would it have been better to have like Daniel and Braytac sitting on one side of the desk across from um, mm. Delic and Jacob? Yeah. Would have been, but I'm, yeah, I'm wondering sure. if the actor was unavailable. But that, that um, Mark Gibbon guy, he is the one I was talking about a couple of weeks ago. He was the original Thor. So he was the, yeah. the Thor hologram. That's right. Back from um, uh, right. Thor's, Thor's hammer, Thor's chariot. Thor's chariot. 
first one. Thor's yeah. Hammer. Thor's Hammer. Hammer. Thor's, yeah. Hammer. Yeah. Thor's Hammer. Thor's Hammer. Um, yeah, so that's him. And then uh, he was also the Ashrak in Allegiance, ironically enough. When we we're talking about allegiance, oh, the invisible dude. He was the invisible dude in like in that in that weird getup. Right, that was him in that suit. And then one for you, Mitch. He uh he was Zod in um the CW Supergirl TV show. Apparently they. I mean, I've seen it, but I didn't. Re- I don't recognise. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good old CW. Take your word for it. Didn't see it. Great. Great show. When the Never gate caught it. <laughs> when the gate dug that foxhole when it was on its side or. Oh. On its face, mm. that was nowhere near deep enough for a swoop. Yeah, what the mm. hell? Even when they went through it again, <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, that should just that should be fine. Like you should be able to dig out, and make a tunnel system. Yeah, man, this is okay. Hey, yeah, yeah, remember in a um, hundred days? Yeah, when they sh- when it became really too hard for Tilk to dig out, it was like magma. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that I guess that was, I guess that, that, was, was that was underground magma, magma though. Yeah. Whereas this is, um, but it was weird. Like the pebbles a... were perfect; they were nothing was cut out of them or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, it was like an iris almost. Yeah, yeah. And the, oh, I thought it was quite funny when Jack's like, "Oh, it doesn't matter, uh, General. The gates already dug the perfect foxhole." Mm. I'm like, yeah, but you can't get if they, if there were like Chief Master Sergeant guys around. Yeah, then it's like, well, you're stuck in there. You can't redial the gate because the Kwoosh yeah. is going to kill you. Yeah. So you're kind of just stuck in that little hole. Dude, yeah, I don't oh, think so I don't sure. think he they really cared because Carter was getting tracked That's by it. that dude. Well, that was pretty cool, but they'd just like gate into a into yeah, a foxhole and then cool. just mm. climb out of it. They would have where'd they get that ladder? Yeah, they would have thrown that through first. Yeah. Or hope, <laughs> well, that's the thing, isn't it? You throw the ladder through, then you jump in and you fall about six feet onto a ladder. Wouldn't that be the weirdest <laughs> that would thing? Hurt. Sticking yeah. up the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I kind of would have loved to have seen that scene where like, they just step through the gate and then suddenly yeah. they're kind of just like falling into a wall, but yeah. then they're suddenly this way. Yeah, that, that would have been... I mean, cool, cool shot science. anyway. With the... Yeah, how would they... Uh, they'd have to like jump up when as they're going into the gate, jump into it feet first. Like They'd have to... Jumpers in there, all of a sudden you got like back. Yeah. Siler and other yeah. gate room <laughs> technicians just like like uh, throwing one, them through. Two, three. <laughs> Wait, do we do it on three or after yeah. three? That would be a pretty sick shot though. Like, hey, yeah. when Star like comes a little back and we see it side on, then like run, do some kind of like in you know, a Bruce Lee sideways yeah. kick, and then they land like they standing up immediately. That would yeah. be sick. Like yeah, that Mulan awesome. trailer so cool. where you see yeah, um, yeah. Jason Lee Scott just like just running and just all of a sudden up a wall. It's yeah. like that looks amazing. Boom. Yeah. Monsters Inc. Boom. when they're running through the doors. Absolutely. One of the great movies. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so Colonel Riley's dead, we'd never see him again. <laughs> Wasn't that hectic and that he's talking about Who? Colonel Riley. Who's that? Wasn't it Lieutenant Glenn? The Alpha Site, the Alpha Site Colonel. Um he Which one was he? He um, I don't think we ever saw him. <laughs> Yeah, no, he obviously wasn't available for this episode. <laughs> he was in the last one at the Alpha site. Oh, was he? But um, this one, he was the one that set the self-destruct. And then he's like, yeah, he stayed around to make sure that the Guaul didn't get to the self-destruct. And yeah, then he got 60 seconds. And blew himself up. Whoo, hectic. Imagine I should have stayed with him. Imagine Why? the payout to his family. Whew. Rich. <laughs> yeah. But the letter would have been, uh, he died in a, from a paper cut. <laughs> like they're not allowed to tell him on base, yeah. yeah. In a training accident, yeah. Training, there's so many training accidents in Shine <laughs> yeah. Mountain. Why are you going there? <laughs> we walked a high wire, everyone always dies on the high wire. Yeah, I was thinking that, especially last week, that they're all on active duty, even though they can go to their house, yeah. Like they're nine to five active duty, that'd be so weird because usually, you know, if you go on deployment, you yeah. go for months, at for a months time, years at a time, a year or, or two. I don't know how long it is now, but yeah, yeah, eight, nine months. Yeah, so that'd be kind of cool as well. Yeah, I'll be home tonight, maybe. Yeah, but you couldn't tell your family you're on active duty. Yeah. So one time, I'll just go on a base, and then they're dead. Yeah, yeah. Or you come, <laughs> you got a bullet wound every six months. <laughs> like, why are you getting injured all the time? What are Working you a bit of overtime, honey. i got <laughs> I got to stay at the office for three to five days. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Where have you been? Have try- yeah, uh, just uh, swamped. Why do you <laughs> with uh, telescope work? <laughs> Why do you always just randomly take antibiotics? Where are you getting this stuff? Uh, you know, part of the job. <laughs> yeah, that would be hard to hide all that shit from your family. You just keep it at the office, mate. You're gonna be there the next day. No, I mean like wounds oh, and right, injuries yeah. and stuff. So, oh, don't don't touch me. I want to say, was there a show out there called Army Wives? Like, it had the, the, the SGC version of that? Or there was yeah. that show... Yeah, um, something cool like that. Real Housewives of Stargate. <laughs> wasn't, it, wasn't Alyssa Milano in <laughs> the one of The unit. 
It was a show, the unit, I want to say, and it was about like the the black ops of black ops teams, and even their families lived in like this super secret community next to their base and shit. And it was as much about the team and having to deal with only being like these elite soldiers, not being able to do anything else in their lives, and how their families basically had to be removed from the rest of their families and live in this little community and only deal with each other. So it was as much about like the wives, you know, bickering sort of thing, but yeah, for like. Right dramatic reasons and then these soldiers going off and risking their lives and shit so yeah we'd have like a stargate version of shit like yeah. the secrets being kept and they're like oh our husbands are so bro- oh my god where's the pool guy my husband's just a boring <laughs> telescope guy it's like yeah. flash and he's like across the other side of the universe on like beta site just, like, just shooting up different <laughs> aliens <laughs> yeah, speaking of beta site they said we got to evac to the beta evac mm. immediate evac to beta mm. yeah i was like oh so they do have a beta site as well surely They'd have a few, I reckon. Yeah. I mean, not a few betas, but... No, one beta. Whatever's after mm. beta. Ga- well, I guess it'd be Gamma or Charlie, depending which which way they go, I suppose. Well, yeah. bravo, Charlie. But Alpha, Beta, Omega. Yeah, so maybe Gamma. Cock. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get to the cock site. <laughs> cock site. It's the cock site. I'm there already. <laughs> so these new guns that they have, what was the... <laughs> I, I get that Carter was doing up a vamped version, but the what was the original one they had? It was the TER. So that's from the uh, the Ritu. Yeah, no, yeah, no, but the TER you know. didn't... No, like it was just Mach 1. Mach 1. Yeah, right. Because yeah, I knew... Mark yeah, it was the TER gun, but I was, I was like, how can they now take down the super soldiers using that? It's from... So they yeah, they just utilised the... Um, oh, that little box thing. thing the Talchuk yeah, device, yeah. From Mexico, the wherever device. it was. Yeah, like I said, we never see that box again. But now we've got TRs now. Yeah. Do we ever, work on Super Soldier? Right. Do we ever see the TR again either? I don't. I don't know if we ever see that TR again either. Hmm. Don't know. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Two shots kills. <laughs> Two shots kills now. Yeah. So in the when before the self destruct went off, when Carter and Carter were in the <laughs> were in the shed thing. Yeah. He. That that Master Chief went down, right, after he shot him? Shot him twice or Yeah, because he shot him twice with the Was that with the new one? No, that no no with the old one. Yeah, no, because the new one was um Jack was the only one that's used the new one right yeah, at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, he right. I think he just kinda was out for a little bit. Had sleepy time. Two yeah. shot stuns. Yeah. Yeah, knocked him down. So that gave him a chance to kind of run to away. Get out of there. And then I think the assumption is that yeah, so Jacob had the T E R, Carter grabbed the new power source chip thing. Yeah. And then in the during the evacuation, that's when they got separated. Yeah, so I think those... while while they were running, the the explosion happened, and they just got kind of yeah. probably knocked out and yeah. thrown apart because Jacob was sitting there with the tree on his leg. Yeah, and I, I assume they would have been helping with the evacuation too because they're kind of leaders, you know, they're they're, yeah. they're higher up. So I imagine they would have been helping everyone else and all that kind of stuff to try and get out sort of asap. Oh, uh, I think they would have been trying to keep that technology. Yeah. Alive more than the people. Yeah, but I just mean them the the, re, the how they got separated. Like they probably would have been trying to help. Didn't Jacob say that the 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 base self destruct went off and that's when kind of they got flung into the air or whatever? And he's like, if yeah. I survived, then mm. you know that thing survived. Yeah, which annoyed yeah. me because Jacob would have been obviously running away, further away from the blast, whereas that thing was. What near right next That's to him? I mean, it it felt like a, he was a real far cry away from everything that had happened. Yet he was still like under a collapsed tree. Yeah, and I'm like, Jesus yeah. Christ, how how big was this blast radius? <laughs> yeah, man, like, huge. I'm yeah, so safe over here. Well, I think there was actually the two super soldiers. Yeah, or more than one. Oh, yeah, because they find the one. armor right. of that one. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that guy did die or get really fucked up. Oh yeah, because they said something about an inertial en- inertia energy or blow them up or whatever. Yeah, you can't. But then Carter physics. blew up old mate with a rocket, and he just got back up. Yeah, well, so. they did that with the C four in the earlier episode too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the dev- one definitely got destroyed in the initial blast, and that's where they got the idea for the missile. Yeah. But then you obviously the missile just wasn't enough kinetic energy to. That was the tiniest missile I've ever seen. <laughs> Well, it's it's something a, with UAV, yeah, mate. Yeah, because that's something a little UAV. Silent did, did all right, chucking them on with five minutes. I mean... <laughs> yeah, turn it into a UCAV. Chuck some C4 onto it, at least. <laughs> 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 or Nakoda. Yeah. Put some Nakoda in it. In the Quadria, blow up the whole f***ing town. <laughs> yeah. Carter was going a bit Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator there at one stage, where she's yeah. like, you know, mm. covering herself in 
in the environment and like yeah, she's all pretty cool. she's all With messed up in her face like, yeah, yeah face exposed she's like dirty and bloody and I'm like that's not gonna hide you that well cover yourself in leaves and shit but while she's being hunted and I was just waiting for that moment she comes out with the fire and just like I want to kill to see Carter do it that it annoyed me when she got up and she's like trying to flash her watch at the yeah. UAV I'm like what are the odds you're gonna get the right angle <laughs> as that's moving along in the sky then yeah. oh there's a watch flashing down there I did love that um the, the fake out scene where she's leaning up against the tree and you think the car warriors like stalking up on her. Cause you know, you can see yeah. kind of the, the three quarter mm, yeah. shot of the soldier leaning Classic up against the tree. Classic thriller movie move. And I was, and yeah. I, I bought it. I remember the first time watching this, I totally bought that. I'm like, Oh, she's, she's actually, <laughs> what is going to happen here? She's, <laughs> and then it was the fake hat, and uh, I was like, "You bastards!" <laughs> well done. Just shooting ahead to, uh, to the uh, to the end a little bit, um, where she had you know fired the missile and it exploded, and she's like, "Oh, that indestructible warrior totally died just then. I'm gonna go and sit right next to where he died." <laughs> yeah. So when he like erupts like a zombie out of yeah. the dust, he's right there, and I'm yeah. like, "You're a." F- Idiot. Does she yeah. Why would you go and stand next yeah. to the thing? That you, there's no pieces. There's no trace of him. Again, indestructible. So if you had a chance of actually killing him, surely he would be in pieces, That's not like thought. disintegrated. And if there was more than one of them, surely there'd be another. Might be another one walking around. So you just Absolutely. go out and stand in the middle of nowhere in the open. <laughs> yeah, sit like, next to just... like the blast. Like literally sit on the blast crater. Yeah, and then when <laughs> like, he gets it's... up, she just goes and runs back and hide. I'm pretty sure you guys find the same rocks. <laughs> or, is it, or is it a little different outcropping of rocks? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty ballsy. I mean, she's probably going to there to like, you know, check to see if it was dead or not, but she did. She kind of just sat down and went, I am fucking wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> and it's nowhere in her mind does she think, oh, that was a huge blast. Everyone would be running towards this right now. <laughs> Good and bad. I think this is some of the best acting from Amanda Tapping. She doesn't have much dialogue. No. But you can see the desperation oh, in yeah. her face. Yeah. Yeah. And she knows she's in some deep shit. Yeah. And in all the like commentaries and interviews and stuff like that, she just talks up how much she absolutely loved this episode. Just yeah, you know, getting all dirtied up and just. Do you reckon she liked it better than stuff. Grace? No, um, Grace is one of the fan favorites. No, yeah. <laughs> My bad. I mean, well, funnily enough, she was actually some fans. <laughs> she was filming them all at the same time. So like, Grace. Uh, Chimera and Death Nail were all actually filmed at the same time. So it's like she'd do like... That would have been confusing. Yeah. She'd do like a half day on Death Nail, like dating Pete and stuff in the morning. And, yeah. then, and then the afternoon she'd get all dirtied up. And, um, <laughs> That's not all she was doing to Pete. And, well, have a listen to this. So I teased it last week, but uh, Peter DeLuise and Amanda Tapping did the uh, audio commentary for this episode. Now, this worked out because the three guys were shooting flat. this and while they're doing all their stuff, I'm off shooting an episode called Grace. And... And Chimera. With my brother David. With your brother David. Who plays Pete Shanahan. My boyfriend. Yummy. So we actually, I didn't see the guys when because I was shooting Grace and no. Chimera and Death Nell simultaneously. I didn't, I think, see Rick for about... Was that time. weird? I didn't see him for like to, two or three weeks. Was that was that peculiar to go and one day be covered with dirt and blood and, and gook and then the next day be in a pretty dress be and be girly-girly? Be in a pretty frock girly. and girly-girly, yeah. And playing, freaky. playing push me up against the wall. <laughs> but that's a different episode. But that's a different we'll do the commentary for that later. Yeah. Well, maybe we should just forget about this episode and talk about the push me up against the wall scene. Well, I was <laughs> yeah. My brother, David, uh, he said, I can't believe they're paying me for this. I get to make out with a man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Shoot, sir. Um... Get to he tells up me you're really doesn't even know. Does he really? Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't, he doesn't use he's, that. He's he doesn't just say that. Yeah. He's good, too. Yeah. Well, he practices O'Neal. a lot on pillows and uh, in any <laughs> <laughs> He takes into his brother. He takes concern. his work seriously. I like Absolutely. That. Professional. <laughs> so talk to me about this. One day, you're totally like covered that. with dirt. Mm, filthy. And the next day, you're completely dolled up with nighttime Glamour. girl makeup, making out with my Glamour brother. Glamour hair. So up. you went from being dirty girl to even <laughs> more dirty girl. <laughs> 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 to the dirty, dirty girl. Yeah, what? to making out with your brother and ending up naked in bed with your brother. Yeah, I, I think I still have the raw dailies at my house. <laughs> you have a special collection if you ever want to get them back. Thank you so much. <laughs> Man, I love those two. They're uh, so good together. Just what is she like? Convincingly <laughs> looked so rooted by the end of like. Of death now. <laughs> hey, yeah. like she would have been tired. She's filming three episodes at once. Yeah. Because like you said, she didn't say a lot, but like I believe that she was absolutely wrecked. And that ending where <laughs> yeah. O'Neill's like, you want to get up? You want to walk? She's yeah. like, 
I just need to rest for a bit. He's like, yeah, I'm totally joking. Go on my shoulder. It's fine. <laughs> I, just, I can't carry you. I've got bad knees. I just knees. liked it how she kind of thought, well, it's just me versus this super soldier. I've got to, I can't give up. So, so she's hiding from it majority of the time. She sees the UAV crash and she's like, all right. Pulls out the Leatherman tool. And just, <laughs> I guess she carried that with her. MacGyver's something up. Yeah. And isn't it isn't it great that that super soldier just stood right in front of the missile? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> what are the chances? <laughs> I like it even like when she first found it, she lines it up like, oh, so when he definitely walks there. <laughs> yeah. It's one thing. Yeah, mate, she's calculated it. Yeah, right? go, Maybe trigonometry and shit. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll start connecting the wires, and then he turns around and sees her and starts firing. She's like, shit. And then before yeah. she fires, like he's obviously in the right position. And she's like, like peeking over, and then she pops her head right up, and I'm like, "What are you doing? She's firing the missile." Yeah, I mean, what a shit shot that one was. He was right shooting at Tilk, shooting at Carter, couldn't get oh, either. That of guy, them. yeah. Mm. It I looked mean, like he was far away. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably looked... hard to see in that helmet. Too. Yeah, that yeah, helmet yeah. is going to be glare, and there's going to be fog. Where are the up eyes, by the way? I always thought the eyes were the black, but then they got the lights. Oh, so yeah, some, yeah, he's yeah. looking very insecty uh, this time yeah. around. Apparently, yeah. yeah, I always, I think for the actual actor, the black part is the eyes. That's where I think the eyes are. Yeah, well, I think yeah, well, they took the helmet off last episode. That's where the actor sees, but I think in universe, the little blue lights are supposed to be the eyes. Yeah, because that's weird. is it this episode or maybe a previous? One, like when you kill a cull, a cull warrior, the lights, the go lights out. go out. Yeah, yeah. It's just that was just weird. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's like it's definitely an oversized it's on his for the size of the head. Yeah, it's definitely up really, really high. Yeah, that's weird. So he's got issues. That's why he's a shit shot. That's why he's got the rapid fire. Imagine, yeah. imagine, I mean, imagine <laughs> if you put one of those helmets on a Jafar, like a yeah. standard Jafar, they'd never hit anything. Yeah. Mm. So that's why they've comments like, we're going to put a helmet on you, but we'll give you rapid fire so you can just, just spray and pray. Just spray and pray. Yeah, for sure. And he doesn't pray enough, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just like that how she kind of just used all her skill and cunning and, and intellect to Yeah and you MacGyverisms think, to yeah. just take this dude out. And you and kinda was, think about it like she was probably the best suited person too. Like I don't know if any of the other like if that was Shanksy, he'd be fucked. Like, oh, there's yeah, no way Shanksy so would like dead. like <laughs> so she's dead. like a trained Air Force major. <laughs> yeah. Plus she's like super nerd supreme. Yeah. So it's like I don't know if even like Teal or Jack could have like Jerry rigged the, the missile on the UAV and gotten in there and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So nah. they would have just been planning Jack- C four and skirmishing <laughs> skirmishing around. <laughs> yeah. Jackson would have found tiny writing on him and found a way to turn it off. Yeah, yeah no, Jackson true. would have tried to like talk to him. He'd be like, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. We can we can talk this out. It's fine. And he's uh, like, Hail Anubis. Anubis. He's Anubis. like, No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Anubis and I we go way back. We're friends. It's we're fine. Take- we're we're both half ascended. <laughs> Yeah, so I oh, I love this episode. It's so good. Especially when Jack eventually takes out the, the super soldier. And he's like, you all right? And she's like, need a minute. Yeah. And he's like, fuck. And she's like, is he? Oh, yeah, he's dead. Til- Tilk, is, is yeah. he dead? Is yeah. he dead? Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> yeah, but not even, he says he's dead. But then when they eventually do like the zoom out yeah. and he got like, oh, Carter's lovingly, you know, like and very tired laying on Jack's shoulder. And he's like, you got this, you know, he's very proud of her. He's so relieved because he's found her and it's all good. Everything's good. And they zoom out. And then you've still got Tilk holding yeah. the gun. <laughs> it's like a freeze frame ending. Like at the dead ending. body's head. Like, <laughs> yeah. you might be dead, but I'm going to kill you still. Yeah. You yeah. motherfucker. I like, wish um, yeah. Tilk had the armband cannon now. Oh, yeah. that would have been cool. so yeah. sick. Well, they got a, they'd have a couple of them now. Yeah, yeah. Well, because even Jacob was using it back in um, Evolution. Yeah. yeah, he had little. Yeah, it would have oh, been so good if Tilk sick. had two gauntlet. Oh. Oh. oh, yes. He just goes oh, in the battle, oh, literally getting the guns like, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes in there with like a singlet, the guns out, yeah. and the guns on his wrist. He doesn't yeah. need his like. He just carries the 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 staff uh, weapon. Just as a melee tool, like he's like, I could shoot you with this, but I'm gonna whack you. Pretty boss if you just walked out with nothing. Yeah, just that would be that's. Oh, I'm kind of devastated. Like a super soldier with no armor. Yeah, 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 guys. When Stargate (laughs) returns, we can do this shit, and we're not breaking cannon. This is shit that was there, ready to use, and they never did it. (laughs) And every now and again, he just gets clipped in the leg or something, and then. Yeah, just has to take, take a break after the two day mission. Stands up and keeps walking, <laughs> and you're like, "Oh, he's just a he's real Terminator. It's just, it's just Tilk. <laughs> That's brilliant." Does um, 
Tritonin heal. Yeah. It no. works better Does than... Does it? Yeah. I thought it just replaced their immune system. I thought that's all it did. I didn't Although think it Although it's made out of... of I think it's made out of... It's not uh, as good as Gould. Uh, yeah, it's ground ghoul. It's like symbiote, <laughs> Cause, symbiote juice. Because wasn't the whole thing with Orpheus when Teal'c was sort of had lost his mojo is because he he wasn't healing as quickly as he would have if he still had a like the 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 dichotomy of he wasn't healing as fast as he would have if he still had a, a Goa yeah. world, but yeah. if he'd had a Goa world, that shot would have killed the Goa world and killed him. I yeah, just feel like just it's a transition. Uh, I feel like it's a just a watered down version of whatever he had before. Yeah, but I always thought it was just mm. like. Like I he, still he still reckon, gets the good immune system. Like he can't get yeah. sick and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But I don't think he's got like the 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 healing factor and durability well, that he used to have. I think he probably heals better than a human. Oh yeah, definitely. But he's not yeah, down to not human as level. not as much as he did with the Gould. That's yeah. the way I think of it. Yeah, he's... they never say it, but no, there's just those few illusions. Yeah, isn't there? yeah. I kind of think Tritonin is a wonder drug. They kind of make it out to be this shit thing because it makes. Them a bit weaker than the normal Jafar, but it's mm. they're still way better than a human. I did like the I did like the tie in when Jacob's trying to sort of bring everything back together, and he's like, "Hey, just so you know, this Tritonin stuff is made out of my dead brothers and sisters. Like millions of Tokra died, mm. yeah. So you could have this wonder drug." And he was trying to use that as a way to like bring them together. Mm. And I'm like, "That's really cool. I never yeah. really thought about that before." It did. I mean, it didn't work in the end. Yeah. But I'm like, that would have been really cool. The like that's the that's the ultimate kind of you from the Jafar is to, to the Gua'uld is like okay these Jaf- these um, Tok'ra that you hate we're going to essentially take symbiotes from them now that's going to make yeah. us stronger so that we can team up and defeat you I'm like mm. that's that's pretty cool I just kind of wish they made the Tritonin like a six month inoculation thing where you because they use it as a riding crutch too much it's like oh Tilk's running out of Tritonin or it's like mm. come on how often do you have to do it, it should just be like a, a vaccine Every six months or something. Yeah. That'd be nicer because it, mm. it'd make it as a force to recruit. You'd be like, yeah, you just take this needle every six months and you're good. Yeah. yeah. You can't go on ex- can't go on week-long missions. Yeah. Unless you carry that much Tritonin with you. Yeah. It's kind of dumb. Yeah. yeah. I guess they've just done it as a writing tool to give them something to, to write towards. Less makeup. Yeah. Like in the, in the same way, like, you know, there was always for the first couple of seasons, there was that, that overhanging thing of when Teal'c's Primtar will mature, what are we going to do? What are we going to yeah. do? And all that kind of stuff. So I guess, yeah, so to not make him fully invincible, they're like, yeah. okay, now he's got to And they're also using it as like a, a dangling carrot for Jafar to join the rebellion. Like you don't have to rely like on mm. the symbiotes anymore. So you don't need access to them. We've got this that you can use now. Yeah. He's a lifetime supply. That's what I mean. If you have to, if it's only once a year or once every six months, you, you only need... Mm. Yeah, I guess it just doesn't give him, doesn't give him as much to write. I guess and that's probably yeah. The but you don't why. need that. I don't think. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. It does matter. Nah. Stargate. Yeah. We're, hey, we're going you know, in circles. Do here. you know what does matter? Is how Delic got his name. Does it though? Delic <laughs> number three. <laughs> Who's Delic? Delic is the uh, Tokra, the Tokra with the shiny teeth. Derelict my balls. <laughs> <laughs> we love Sebastian Spence. We want Sebastian yeah, Spence back. back. He plays mm. Delic. He's good. Delic, no. You know, at the risk of being politically incorrect, I have oh, to tell you where the where the, the name Delic <laughs> comes from. I have a friend. I have a friend named Derek. Yes. Okay. Derek is Chinese Canadian. Derek. Derek used to work at a produce place, and his boss, who was also Chinese, had a very thick accent. <laughs> and I would call the produce place because uh, he didn't have a cell phone at the time. This is years ago. And I'd say, for example, your and he'd pick up the, the phone and say, first class produce, which is first class produce. <laughs> first class produce. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. And I'd say, hi, it's Peter. I'd like to speak to Derek. And he'd say, okay, one minute. Delek, Delek, phone for you. So I started calling Derek Delek every chance I got. And so that's how we came to this name, Delek. See, it's just classic Peter. Just... <laughs> Putting his friends' names into the show. Nothing wrong with casual racism. <laughs> that's that a bit why of fun. he named him that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's how he got. That's how yeah. Peter came up with it. Because, because um, you know, Peter always puts his friends or his kids or whatever's names into shows. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was able to put a friend's name into the show Delic. and make it an alien. <laughs> Delic. Could have made the actor Chinese. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Mm. Equality. That'd be racist. Yeah, I was gonna say. I feel like that's worse. <laughs> 
it's worse to give Chinese people work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do it for free. Do it, yeah, do it a lot cheaper. Worse <laughs> to intentionally uh, hire a Chinese person just so you can call them Delic. Well, that's Delic. what they do now. Yeah. They do it all the time. They tick checklists. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> of course there is. So last week, one of our biggest issues with Chimera was that it was two stories. And the way that you perfectly summed it up, Reese, was it was dreaming and dating. Dreaming <laughs> and dating. And it it was like, well, give us one or the other. Neither of them were almost strong enough to maybe carry the entire episode, but they both existing in the same one just sort of pissed us off. This one we get split stories as well and while they did you know obviously have a very obvious connection we're having this very political talks between the Jafar and the Tokra like mm. we did two weeks ago in Fallout but a much better version and people we actually give a shit about and then we had this <laughs> this chase cat and mouse game going on on the, on the Alpha site planet mm. so in two like obviously I just think it was so much better done this time around like how how, how do they not Okay, no, I've just seen... Sorry, Peter DeLuise wrote this week and Robert C. Cooper did the story last week. (laughs) Never mind the question, never mind the conversation. It's like, oh, his entrance was good, yours was better. (laughs) Um, Yeah, this was really the way to go. It's been a while since we've seen the Robert C. Cooper episode, right? Yeah, they've done Um, their best. Yeah, I think... think, And they kept it very quiet, but I think Brad Wright is kind of on a sabbatical this season. Like, he's taking a bit of time off because I think he's kind of, you know, working on Atlantis and trying to get that up and running and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, Robert C. Cooper's sort of taken over the reins as showrunner for this Ew. season. So, I'm guessing <laughs> I'm guessing that's why Robert isn't sort of writing as many episodes himself because mm. he's more sort of looking at the overall uh, series art. Good. It's like the idea yeah. of Brad So, Wright. not only did uh, Cooper kill Daniel Jackson, he created Jonas Quinn <laughs> and now he created Pete. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Pete. <laughs> so, De- <laughs> DeLuise wrote this one. <laughs> no, last week, Chimera. Pete. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Pete. That's no good. Remember Pete? Me Pete. neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that lucky bastard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember him. Yeah, do you know, I, do, I do find the, um, you know, the, to- the talky-talky this episode to be a little bit dull with the back and forth between the um, the Jafar and the and the Tokra. Mm. Do you know what I find the best way to get around all that? To sit through it all? Turn on the audio commentary. Oh, is this another one of those episodes where we just listen to Peter DeLuise the whole time? <laughs> Pretty much. We don't have to play all of them, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've scaled you said back. said it was number six. I've scaled back. This is the last one, right? <laughs> oh, I've got a couple more. So f- I'm looking to wrap up. Now, you'll notice Mark has one nipple showing. Right, and that's that to, all about? Well, that's to keep the homoerotic theme going. Gotcha. Yeah, because With him and Daniel? Because Daniel's him and beside him? Who's Mark? Well, because, uh, because Mizzell, O'Neal big isn't oh. sitting next to him. He's got, he's right? got a nipple out. He's got so a we had to, shirt. we was like, well, where, where are we going to get the, that relationship going? And I thought, you know, if we just cut the nipple out of Mark's outfit, I think that'll suffice for the episode. That'll, that'll, yeah, that'll yeah. cover it. So that's what we did. I didn't even notice. And then... Of course, Sebastian gets to wear leather, but he's on the other side of the table. he's on the other side of the table. So he's delicate. just next to Carmen, who's also in leather. So there's leather on their side, and then there's... Then there's the nipple on the other side. Then there's nipple hole for, for the other side. And I mean, there's a lot of sexual tension right here. There's huge. The Michael, especially, because if, if you notice, he, he keeps sort of looking over and looking down at, at the nip, nipple. At the nipple hole, right. Yeah. And then... Try as he might not to. Well, it's no mistake that there's a table here, because what the audience doesn't realize is each one of these characters does not have any pants on. Right. And if it weren't for the table, we wouldn't know that. We often do that when we film briefing room scenes is we all take our pants off. Because you need to have just your briefs out, right? Or, you know, commando as sometimes happens. Sometimes get shit caught in that commando moment. Absolutely. I hate it when that happens. You can't have a speech like that without being naked from the waist down. So do we think it was fair enough with, like, Jacob in this episode, like, getting a hard time by... Derek, because um, like when he's like, I would, he's like, you know, I would know, I would know this, and then he goes up to Derek and he says, you know, well, of course that we wouldn't have sanctioned this because only the High Council can do that, and they mm. wouldn't have done that because I didn't do it, and I'm part of the High Council. So how the f- did this happen? He's oh, like, yeah. oh well, no, that I get, I'm, it wouldn't have been us. He's like, don't bullshit a bullshitter. He's like, oh, well, okay, maybe you don't find anything out. He goes, I'm a leader. Okay, well, maybe you're a shit leader. Like, he just kept losing yeah. the ground on his lies. But then saying, you know what? 
you've softened. You've you listened to who I'm talking to, and then he had to become yeah. cellmate. I love that. That part. was great. It was like, well, I'm not talking to a member of the High Council. I'm talking to a f-ing human. Yeah, and then I'm like, like whoa, cellmate immediately taking over and going, okay, just because I'm speaking with like my normal human voice, yeah. don't think that I'm any cheaper. Fucking, this is still me. We share the same thoughts. We know what's going on with each other. Don't bullshit me. What the f- is going on? Mm. And then him Let me going, talk to your symbiote. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, no, you've gone soft and. Uh, Everyone thinks that. We're totally talking behind your back. Yep, we're going to vote you out, so yeah. you can deal with it. Mm. And then I liked how then Jacob ba- went back to talk to General Hyman, and maybe even Selmak was talking, and I can't remember. But either way, they're both on the same page, otherwise Selmak would take over, saying, yeah, I'm still on with you guys. You guys do deserve to know what's going on. Like, I'm part of this high council, but I haven't softened. I haven't softened since I became um, a partner with a human, but I totally kind of have, because I think differently now to the high council. So... I don't know, I just like that change in his story arc that he's mm. kind of on the way out and come the end of the episode, he's like, I, I need to focus on my yeah. time as a Tokra now. Because it is a fresh perspective because obviously, you know, most of the, um, well, I guess all of the, the Tokra hosts would be like ex-human slaves that, yep. were, yeah. that were at one point a slave to a ghoul or something mm. like that. So yeah, like they don't sort of know any better. Whereas yeah, to get that fresh, fresh perspective from Jacob. Yeah, and I feel like they were criticizing that, the, the Tokra guy, he was saying like, we have slaves and people who like the Gua'uld or like the Tok'ra, whereas this guy is coming with a fresh fresh perspective. We don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> what, because he's strong and Yeah, yeah we've been stagnant pragmatic. for thousands of years. Yeah. We're yeah. fine, thank you. Because yeah. they've actually got a purely symbiotic relationship yeah. where they're listening to each other. Right, okay, you don't like that. Yeah, yeah, we get it. You want submissive hosts. Okay, tell yeah. me again you're not a ghouled. <laughs> yeah. Well, as, as Peter said in the commentary, you know, that's why they're wearing leather. They're the doms. They're the, dom- yeah. they're the dom tops. Dominatrix. <laughs> And they just want a little sub. They just want a little little sub bitch boy. <laughs> Who really wants it? Who doesn't? <laughs> Hold my pocket, pretty. <laughs> little, <laughs> little sub pig bottoms. <laughs> Hold my pocket. <laughs> yeah, still loving the Cull Warrior because you just know that they just can't die. Yeah. And they haven't made them the new Jafar and just kill them easily. Yeah. Even when they have the TR, TER thing, they still have to shoot the... F- out of it. Yeah, that could have been Carter running from like 20 Jafar and you'd still be like, she'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll be mm. fine. But when it's one Cull Warrior, you're like, oh shit, yeah, she's well, when in it was here. Jack, yeah, in, those um, guns are the, fast. In the fifth man, when it was just Jack versus literally yeah, 60 right. Jafar, you're like, yeah, he's got it. He's yeah, fine. they're fine. <laughs> they don't it. come within 20 meters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's got three whole clips. He'll be fine. <laughs> he's got a few C4 bricks. He'll be Totally yeah, good. He's sorted. All sorted. He's gonna, all he's got to do is stand right in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the Get Into Geek Harry Mailbag. Five star review uh, from Lloyd Den from the UK. You're right. right. Uh, Lloyd. Perfect SG1 podcast. Stop it. Oh, Weirdly. Perfect. And this is actually uh, this has got to be the most unique way I've ever heard of someone finding the show. Weirdly, I found this podcast by randomly typing Jona of Markshaw into Twitter while drunk, saw some people throwing shade, and discovered <laughs> that an SG One podcast existed. That's my type of guy. Who the f-ing hell is tweeting, searching Jona of Markshaw? Well, I couldn't even spell obvi- Markshaw. It's obviously like me. And he was searching Pornhub for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Symbiote category <laughs> symbiotes. <laughs> Love it. I'm an old school fan and I love this series dearly. Since listening to this podcast from about episode 50, I've rewatched loads of episodes I own on DVD. And since I caught up with all the podcasts, I started watching season seven alongside the podcast. Welcome Welcome. along. As they watch one episode per week with a newbie, that's Reese. In, in brackets, the sexy voice, Gibson. Oh, oh sexy yeah. voice. He's getting a bit of a following. Oh, love it. You can live in my den. It's full of laughs, newbie perspective, and behind-the-scenes <laughs> insight. Perfect mixture of humour and fact. Would 100% recommend five stars. A boom. Sensational. Well done, Lloyd. Thank you very much. Lord Appreciate that. Spreading the word. Welcome show. aboard. <laughs> I've got an email here from Marek? Marek? Mar- Marek? I think it's Malik. It's M A R E C. Yeah, but it's Marek. In, oh, Marek. In, in, well, in Peter Deloise. Oh, okay. There we go. Marek. Marek, what? If you can't say his first name, you're going to have a hell of a time yeah, with the last what? name. Yeah, Wojtowicz. Wojtowicz. Perfect. He says, hi, guys. Greetings from Poland. Oh, <laughs> Poland. <laughs> what do you got? Hang on. Hello, greetings from Poland. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
Mike. Just wanted to say ah. huge thanks <laughs> for South this Ever am- for this amazing podcast. Mm. I was looking for something to listen to in the background while drawing. I and don't and even know what this is. And since I was also doing my rewatch through the franchise, oh. it was a perfect fit. I ch- <laughs> Acho's first podcast episode at random, and it was about Serpent's Venom episode. Where are you now? What can I say? It was a perfect choice to get me hooked up for the podcast, and I laughed. Not Norwegian. And I laughed way more than I should have. Guys, it's DJ David Guetta. (laughs) Within a few weeks, I binge listened to your episodes. I think you can say a few weeks. I mean, don't just shorten it in English. I'm just reading it word for word here, mate. I'm reading exactly how it's written. I'm doing it word perfect. (sighs) Ugh. Within a few weeks, I binge listened to your episodes covering seasons four to six. <laughs> Listening to you gave me new and fresh perspective on this show. Sorry like, about this. Mate. Like compare, no- the, <laughs> compare the market. <laughs> like, no- <laughs> like noticing Hammond's kink for self-destructs and counting how many times Carter say word advanced in every episode. The only downside uh. of picking up this podcast is that now I have an urge to buy DVDs of SG1 just to get to hear all the funny audio commentaries. You're welcome, buddy. I love the sound of Stargate segment. Good job. Keep it up. Also, Matt... Uh. <laughs> also, stop Matty from coming up with shitty segments. <laughs> <laughs> But keep the accents going. Yeah. Well, because season six's Around the World was a disaster. <laughs> you know. Uh-oh. Thing, things just got weird. He says, listening to his terrible accents is almost as annoying as him bringing up Star Trek to the oh, conversation God. almost every Epic. episode. I came Man, here to fuck. listen about Stargate, not some lame-ass other sci-fi show. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Epic. Well oh, done, I'll give it Mary. to you. You win 100%. Thank I'll you. I'll give that to you. That's <laughs> epic. Well done. One of my favourites. Oh. Well done. That's well, Matty I, clapping himself. I apologise. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, Matt, <laughs> Matty, I'm Matty clapping Marek's... Matty loves that he just did. I'm clapping Marek's email. That's oh, great. Okay, great. That's brilliant. Great stuff. <laughs> oh... Oh, I'm tired oh, now. That's a headache. Epic. That took a lot out of me. I have a huge headache. If you want, just write back to us. We'll read it in Australian accent. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> the red bearded giant has got in contact with us. Mm. The red bearded giant says things you can say about from... sci-fi. Sorry. Sorry. I was, I was <laughs> drinking. No, I was about yeah. to say, is that the guy, guy from, from Game of Thrones? Yeah. Yes, the uh, the wildling leader. Uh, things you can say about sci-fi, but not your girlfriend. Less talky talky, more bangy bangy. <laughs> Oh, that would have been from Grace from a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, when you misquoted me, making me sound like a f***ing dumbass. <laughs> no, no, that was... I said, I'd, I'm not a fan of uh, listening to all the dialogue. Star Trek I'm, dialogue. I'm, yeah. I'm more like the uh, the action sequences, and you say, <laughs> yeah, no, Reese I... said less talky-talky, no. more bangy-bangy. And then I shortened that <laughs> like... in that episode too. Talky, talky, bangy, bangy. Sound like the abominable snowman from Bugs Bunny. <laughs> I will love him and love him forever. And stroke him. <laughs> it's, it's time, time to find out if Reese's, Reese's been, been paying attention. attention. Here we go, mate. Bit of trivia for the new guy, Reese. Five questions for you, Reese. 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts after the first question. All right. Number one. Mm. What other prop? Is the super soldier weapon based on? TR. Correct. According to O'Neill, the Stargate dug the perfect what? Foxhole. Correct. What injury did Jacob sustain during the self destruct? Oh, I, um, uh, pass. What did Jacob give up, give up for Selmac? Coffee. Correct. How did Carter attempt to get the attention of the UAV? A uh, watch. Correct. What oh. injury did he sustain? His leg. Shot in the leg. He's the tree fell on him in his leg. Oh Jesus! <laughs> his fucking leg. It's a broken leg. Yeah. What? What? His leg. What injury did he sustain? A leg. He sustained yeah, a leg. If the question was what? Oh, okay, what okay. did he injure? <laughs> well, then a leg would have been acceptable. <laughs> Survey says. <laughs> Reese, your father made you wrong. You stupid son of a bitch. These are all <laughs> you are pieces so of evil. F-ing shit. You are so evil. <laughs> you go to the hospital. Hey, mate, what's wrong with you? I got got leg. a leg. Oh, leg. <laughs> leg. More, less doggy doggy. More bangy bangy. Reset leg. <laughs> I didn't try, so I didn't say a f- 
And Trey fell on his leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I would have given it to you. Oh, I but think, it was I after, after the buzzer. buzzer. No, yeah, I would have given yeah. it to you. I mean, I would have too. On the weeks that you weren't here, Brendan, I would have given it to Reese. Yeah. Off. You know, I would have given it to him. He's but real. I'm not, I'm not the quiz done. master. Hey, I'm mate, not the quiz master. Don't blame me. I mean, if I was the one pressing the buttons with all that oh, stuff happens, you could blame me, but I'm not. Yeah. It's Jesus not me. So, uh, yeah, you got most of those right. Uh, the other got prop right. was the TR. Foxhole, you got right. Broken leg we missed out on. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, what did Jacob give up for Selmac? What did you say? Coffee. He got that Coffee. one. Coffee. Yeah. How am I? I would have said pussy. <laughs> Well, Selmak how do you know like, he gave it up? Well, he doesn't like pussy, Selmak. Selmak's allergic to cats, cats so yeah. he can't do it. Uh, That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. yeah he I'm gave scared. that up when his mom died. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was okay. So how... <laughs> he gave it up before then, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's back into it once he was, once he was digging tokra tunnels, yeah. if you know what I mean. God, yeah. <laughs> Kilometre deep. Oh, mate, when you whack it off with no doors, like, shit gets out <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's how emotional <laughs> and dramatic did they make it sound? We're like, he's uh, getting into Sam, and she's like, Dad, have you not had your coffee this morning? He goes, yeah. Selmak doesn't like coffee. And she's like, oh my God, Dad, you gave up coffee? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I had to do that for Selmak. That's and I'm a like, really genuine like, relationship you oh, guys have. Hang, hang on, are they talking about coffee? <laughs> yeah. Or are they talking about something that actually means something? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. it just seemed like such a big thing. I'm like, yeah, is, he, like is his life dependent on coffee? That's why we don't, because we don't talk anymore, Sam. Yeah. It's yeah. like, hold on a second. She was imagining you two weeks ago yeah. having a DNA, DNM. So. be different if he, she's like, oh, have you, you spoken to- You know where to- I am, Dad, every week. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know yeah. where you are. Every time I come to say hello, you're on some fucking mission. Yeah. yeah, and you're too good for me, Dick. That is episode 148 of Get Into Gate Death Knell. We will be back on the next episode. A two-parter, guys. <laughs> Oh, this one. I mean, dare we say fan favourite? I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. I'll see. But it's a pretty, fan. it's a pretty key one. Let's put it that way. So, uh, heroes, part one and part two <laughs> on episode one hundred and forty nine of Getting the Gate. In the uh, meantime, while you're waiting for that podcast to drop, as you of course will be, check out all of our old ones. Especially if you are a new listener to the show, hit us up. Get in the Gate, a Stargate podcast on your favourite podcasting channel. Follow us on the socials: Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Or drop us a uh, long form chat. Get in to gate at gmail.com and if you don't want to hear our death now jump on our Patreon yeah give us a save oh. and of course if you are part of uh, of our new listeners we keep hearing from each and every week and you want to get back into Stargate you don't own it on the DVD or the physical format like many of us do you can uh, always get it on iTunes or the wonderful people and they would be even more wonderful if they sponsored the show Stan streaming service in Australia right, or guess... you can go and buy the DVDs to oh, hear Jesus. the audio commentary Christ <laughs> Stan we're writing the check and they just can cancel it <laughs> Get into Geek 